They will regulate a militia being necessary to the security of a free state. To the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Thanks so much for tuning in to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. It is great to have you with us today. On the program here in a matter of moments, Cibola County, New Mexico Sheriff Tony Mace going to join us. We're going to talk about the red flag bill that was signed into law by uh, New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham last week and the comments that she made when uh, she signed that bill into law, basically telling county sheriffs, listen, if you're not going to uh, enforce these red flag orders, you should resign. Well, Sheriff Tony Mace has a very different idea about what to do when it comes to those red flag laws. You'll hear about that uh, coming up in just a second. Also, just a quick reminder, uh, we were out at CPAC 2020 last week, the Conservative Political Action Conference, uh, and there are a number of videos that uh, have now been uploaded to the uh, YouTube page. If you subscribe to Town Hall Media, uh, you can uh, check out our interviews with folks like Maj Ray from Black Guns Matter, uh, Rob O'Donnell from Brothers Before Others, Amanda Suffolk, uh, and uh, Kelly Ann Pigeon from the DC Project, and more. Uh, so make sure that uh, you, if you're not already subscribing to Town Hall Media on YouTube, that you do so, so you can get access to uh, those interviews. Want to thank each and everybody, each and everybody, each and every person who uh, stopped by the Town Hall Media booth, so we could have a little chat during the CPAC event, and it was a, a great time, I think, had by all. Uh, but uh, make sure that you check out all of the uh, interviews that we were able to do there at National Harbor, Maryland. Right now, let's get into our conversation with Cibola County, New Mexico Sheriff Tony Mace here on Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. Uh, good morning, Cam. Thanks for having me. Uh, always a pleasure. Unfortunately, I wish the uh, the news was better. Uh, we did see Governor Michelle Luan Grisham sign the red flag bill into law. And, and during the signing ceremony, she had some... Uh, some 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 words for you and the other sheriffs who who have opposed this uh, this measure, saying that if if you won't enforce it, if you won't use this law, that you should resign. <laughs> she did have some words for the sheriffs, and the sheriffs have some words for her. And I basically informed her that you know um, I don't work for her, and I don't work for the legislature. I work for the people that uh, elect me into office, as well as the rest of the sheriffs across the state of New Mexico, and. We will continue to represent the people. Um, that's what we're here for. And um, we'll see her in court. And we're going to challenge this uh, particular law through the judicial system because there we won't be fighting politics and special interest groups. We'll actually be in a legal judicial system with, uh, with real attorneys and real judges. And we may stand a fighting chance there. Uh, you know what? Um, so when do you anticipate the, the lawsuit being filed? Will you have to wait for the law to actually take effect? Um, no. Um, so we have, uh, we'll be meeting with an attorney actually tomorrow, uh, two different attorneys, uh, two different legal counsels and, um, discuss some of our options there. And then, uh, we have a third, um, law firm that we're looking at because this has so many issues. This particular law has so many issues against, um, not just constitutional issues, but it has, um, issues with, um, the immunity clause to law enforcement, it has issues with state, it, it, it contradicts case law. There, there's just so much in, encompassed within it that so we've got to find the right legal, the right law firm, um, because we want to go in this to win. Um, and, and, you know, that there's so many citizens' rights on, uh, at stake with this particular, uh, unconstitutional law that we have, um, we, we really got to dot our eyes across our T's and make sure we're getting the, uh, right law firm to represent us because this, this, this is going to be a huge win, not just for New Mexico, but for the whole United States. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, unfortunately, we've seen in some other cases, uh, some other states, court challenge is still going on. But right now, uh, you know, unfortunately, it seems like a lot of judges are, are giving uh, a great deal of deference uh, uh, to these lawmakers who have, you know, put in place these uh, the, the, these uh, uh, initiatives that uh, allow for individuals' rights to be stripped. Uh, before they they even get their day in court, what are some of the big issues that you have with New Mexico's red flag law as it was signed into law? So, number one, um, uh, you know, under the Second Amendment, the Constitution of the United States, you cannot deny somebody their right to bear arms without committing a crime. That's a fact. We know that. Um, there's the um, due process issues where um, a lot of these orders are um, ex parte. Um, and they, they, um, on this particular law, basically you're, you're making somebody, you're holding somebody guilty before even committing a crime and you're taking away their property. 
uh, under the Constitution since the Magna Carta. Property has been protected. Um, and um, I'm sorry, a weapon can be considered property. I purchased it. It's mine. It's not the government. I haven't committed a crime. You have no right to it. Um, they've uh, backed up this, uh, what they call civil search warrants. There is no such thing as a civil search warrant. You commit a criminal act, and with probable cause, we go in and swear out and, and get a search warrant um, when a crime has been committed. Again, no crime has been committed. And, you know, and then in a twist of turns, they've uh, put in the uh, immunity clause within this, which for us is basically as a punch at the sheriff to say, do this or you're going to be on the hook for a lot of lawsuits, a lawsuit for a lot of money your county is. Well, you know, uh, it's a double-edged sword. If we do it, we're going to get sued. If we don't do it, we're going to get sued. So I'd rather protect people's constitutional rights and protect their privacy and and uh, and challenge it in the legal judicial system rather than uh, serve a uh, unconstitutional order. Um, and, I mean, we have a right to, to feel secure in our homes. We have a right to unreasonable search and seizure. And, I mean, we can just go down the line on this particular um, law. And, and we, we the people, we the citizens, we the sheriffs that took an oath of office, we realize these issues with it. And, um, you know, when you're just, when you're fighting a governor and a, and a radical Democrat controlled, uh, Senate and House, mm-hmm. it's, it's bought, bought and paid for legislation where they're driving an agenda. And, and, you know, we see it, uh, Colorado, New Mexico, Virginia. I mean, just, you just go down the line. I mean, our governor's cashing ca- campaign checks is what it boils down to. Hey, you know, let's talk about that for a second, because uh, this bill was introduced last year as well. It did not pass out of the legislature. Um, nothing really changed, right, in terms of the makeup of the legislation between last year and this year. But uh, but the vote sure changed. So what what happened? Was it those uh, those Bloomberg bucks coming into the state? Uh, I absolutely, without a doubt, believe it was the more Bloomberg Bloomberg bucks coming into the state. And that's what we've seen. And, you know, some of the some of the. And, and I think it's the, the campaign funding that the governor has that she can really uh, release out to certain um, senators and uh, legislators that, hey, you vote with me and, 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 and here's the money. You go against me and I'm going to block all your other pieces of legislation, any capital outlay money that you're eligible to receive for your county. Basically, I'm going to chop you guys off at the knees mm-hmm. and do nothing. And, and that's what we've seen. Uh, that's, what we, that, that's what we've seen. Yeah, we've seen that in Virginia as well. We've seen uh, retribution on the part of uh, lawmakers going after sheriffs. Uh, there was a cost of living increase raise, basically a 3% pay raise that uh, uh, Democrats voted down because the sheriffs and the Senate Majority Leader in Virginia explicitly said because the sheriffs are, are showing up here at, at these committee meetings and they're opposing uh, the gun control laws that, that that we're trying to put on the books. And so as a result, uh, you know, they're going to go after those sheriffs uh, and their deputies uh, you know, right there in their bank accounts and to uh, to try to punish them financially. And we're seeing uh, rumors that uh, next year lawmakers will introduce a bill that would go after the pensions uh, of sheriffs who do not uh, support the uh, the anti-gun agenda there from Ralph Northam. So, you know, what, what you're seeing there in New Mexico, we're seeing in Virginia as well. Uh, and I know that you were recently, uh, what, this was the Western State Sheriff's Association meeting that you were at? Yeah, that's correct. So I was the uh, I was um, the president of the Western State Sheriffs Association, and that's all seven that's sheriffs from all seventeen states west of the west of the Mississippi to include Kansas. And um, we all meet once a year there in Nevada because that's where our base is at. And you know, there's there's sheriffs from all over all, all all seventeen states. And I mean, we all have the same concerns, and we all have the same you know pretty much. We talk about public land issues. We talk about the office of the sheriff. We talk about the Second Amendment and just this year, red flag was just a huge topic during all the sheriffs. Um, and, um, and, and how are we going to stop this? How are we going to slow this down? Because it's just, it's going to take the nation by storm. And, 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 you know, I believe Virginia, New Mexico, um, Arizona, Texas, we're, we're kind of the battleground states right now to get this stopped. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, one of the, the things that I know you and I have talked about uh, in the past, uh, there, there is no mental health component to the red flag bill in New Mexico, right? It's simply, um, if you're deemed to be a danger to yourself or, or, or someone else, uh, your legally owned firearms would be taken from you and then you'd be left alone. Is that the way the law works in New Mexico? That's absolutely right. And the one that the governor just signed, there's nothing to address the uh, individual, the mental health, the, the person that's in crisis. It basically just says, hey, a complaint's been filed. Go take all their guns, seize all their property, and have a nice day. So, 
you know, that's a huge risk because now you've taken an already heated situation. Even if you choose to do this, and, and, and the municipalities are kind of on the fence with it, so say a municipality chooses to go and um, and uh, issue one of these orders, and it's already a heated situation, right? And mm-hmm. then you go and you take the guns and, and take this per- this individual's personal property, and essentially what you've done is just agitated them and aggravated them more. And in our law, it says 48 hours. Um, now they have 48 hours to sue and figure out what they're going to do and you've already, I mean, you've already escalated it. So the probability for someone to act up now is even more, and and, and you're encouraging it with this law. Yeah, it's it, it's uh, you know it, it, the more that I dig into these uh, the, the the actual language of these red flag laws, and then I look at um, what's going on with the mental health system in these uh, various states. In Virginia, for instance, we are routinely running out of of inpatient beds. So when somebody is is picked up on a mental health hold. Uh, oftentimes they're sitting in a jail cell rather than, you know, uh, getting the, uh, the evaluation they need from mental health professionals. And, and, and I know that, uh, particularly in New Mexico, uh, rural, uh, mental health services are, are dramatically, uh, underfunded and are unavailable in a lot of cases. And it seems to me like this is a way for politicians to say, look, we, we did something. Uh, but the problem is the, the something doesn't address the real issue. It violates the constitutional rights of residents. Uh, and so what they're doing, yeah, they're doing something, but they're not doing anything good and they're not doing anything valuable. You're absolutely right, Cam. And, and that's exactly the language they use in their testimonies uh, in these committee hearings is, is it's better to do something than nothing. Well, you know what? There's something is violate our constitutional rights, which is, which is, which is horrible as an elected official. Even when they go on their social medias and, 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 and say, uh, we don't, we, we don't care about your proposed Second Amendment constitutional rights. And the language was, I don't give a damn about your proposed constitutional Second Amendment rights. They don't care. All they want to do is say we did something rather than nothing. If they really truly cared, they'd look at the mental health system, uh, that, that, that the failures that are in the state of New Mexico. I mean, it's the same thing. No facilities, no beds, no, no, no good, no good treatment, no good. There's no resources to people. I mean, for me, if I, in my county alone, it takes, I have to drive uh, almost a hundred miles to get somebody to a licensed mental health physician. Um, which is in, and I mean, it's just rural New Mexico. The, the resources aren't there. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're absolutely right. Uh, talking again with Sheriff Tony Mays from uh, Cibola County, New Mexico uh, about the uh, new red flag law. And again, the uh, impending lawsuit, uh, challenging that new red flag law. I, I'm, I'm curious, uh, Sheriff, you know, I, I saw a news story. I think it was, from the Las Cruces paper uh, last week talking about uh, New Mexico's second congressional district, uh, which is seen as a, a very vulnerable district for Democrats to, to keep. This was uh, picked up in 2018. And a lot of the Republicans that are uh, running in the primary, uh, they're talking about the Second Amendment. They're bringing things up like the red flag law. In fact, I think you had one candidate who shot a red flag with a rifle in one of her campaign ads. Uh, is this going to be... Uh, an issue for New Mexico voters this year and this November. Well, you know, you bring up a good point, Cam, and and and, and I'll, I'll bring the full circle. Is you know, for far too long, um, our elected government in New Mexico has been just running rogue and radical and doing whatever they want, um, and with no accountability. Um, last year, uh, in 2018, we've seen that swing vote out of uh, John Anna County. Not to mention there were. Somewhere around 8,000 absentee ballots found hidden in the trunk of a car after somebody was declared a winner. You know, I mean, that's horrible. But again, what happened is you see citizens across the state, uh, across the whole state mobilizing that are like, hey, you know what? You guys are far too left leaning for us. You don't listen to the voice of the people. You're coming after our constitutional rights. You're coming after our guns. So it doesn't matter what party you're in right now. It's people, it's back on the platform of we the people, and they want people to represent their opinion and their voice. So seats that have been uh, unchallenged for so long, Mm -hmm. they're now getting challenged by uh, Republicans and Democrats, um, as well as uh, down in the uh, Don Anna County side, and even at the congressional and the state level, citizens, people are coming out of the woodwork to run against these people and upseat them, uh, try to upseat them. Uh, and, and really take, make up the, change the makeup of our legislature because they're just tired of their voices not getting heard. They're tired of the attacks on their, uh, on their rights. Uh, they're tired of the, uh, the tax increases, um, in New Mexico. Everything, everything bad that you could imagine is coming out of this legislature and, and people are tired of it. 
Well, I got to tell you, I mean, it, it's really encouraging to to hear you say that uh, not only are you having Republican candidates, but you're having Democrat candidates uh, uh, challenge some of these policies because, you know, I, I think you and I may have talked about this before. As far as I'm concerned, and really, I mean, it's 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 not just a matter of opinion. It's a matter of fact, the, the right to keep and bear arms is a right of the people. Uh, and so to me, that makes it a, a nonpartisan issue. We should have support from the left, from the right, from the middle. Uh, you know, I, I believe that uh, – uh, our rights will be far more secure when it's not primarily one political party that's that's out there defending them. So I would love to see uh, pro-gun Democrats not only run for office, but win office uh, in New Mexico. Well, and you're absolutely right, Cam, and I'll give you a, prime, a perfect example here in New Mexico. A lot of um, it, a lot of people are, no matter what, you know, a lot of people are conservative. A lot of the elected officials are still conservative. You know, I myself run on a Democratic ticket. I'm elected as a Democrat. Mm -hmm. I support our president. I support, uh, you know, I, I support um, our Constitution. I support our Second Amendment, right? And, and that's why I'm fighting to protect that, you know. Um, and, and you'll see a lot of that across New Mexico. It's just upseating some of these deeply rooted um, uh, people that have held these seats for a while is, is tough. And, and it hasn't been done, so... I'm hoping this time around and a lot of citizens are is, Hey, we can change that make up the legislature and get back to the, get away from there's, there's gotta be a balance between the party, right? There really does. And, and that we see that more even now because you have a Democrat controlled Senate, you have a Democrat controlled house, you have a democratic governor. There is no balance. It's they do whatever they want to. So we need to bring that back and get that balance. And, and, and if you come from a conservative platform, and, and you want to, and you want to, and you want to support the constitution and, and, and support we the people. Those are the people that we need in office. And, and, um, I, I think it's just in Mexico, people have gotten away from the, the elected, the elected representatives up there. They've just gotten away from it. And, and, you know, people are, people are going to hold them accountable. Absolutely. Well, listen, I appreciate you spending a few minutes with us today. Uh, uh and, and let me know when the uh, lawsuit's officially filed. I'd love to have you back on. Awesome. Well, we're going to actually be meeting with an attorney tomorrow. Okay. Uh, two different attorneys tomorrow. And then we're going to meet with another one on um, the 13th. And uh, we're just going to try to figure out which law firm is going to represent the people. We're, we're, we're doing this on behalf of the people. So we want to make sure that we choose the right law firm to represent the people and the sheriff. And um, we, 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 we can't afford to lose this. Um, nobody can. Um, not, just, not just here in New Mexico, but across the nation. Absolutely right. Cibola County Sheriff Tony Mays with us here on Bearing Arms Cam and Company. Sheriff, thank you so much. Look forward to talking to you again soon. All right. Time now for our uh, armed citizen story, our recidivist report, our good deed of the day. We'll start with our recidivist report from Ohio, where uh, two men have been charged in a drive-by shooting in Bowling Green, Ohio. Both of these uh, gentlemen, uh, young men, at least one of them, known to law enforcement already, the uh, Fremont News Messenger reports that uh, 19-year-old Shantae Moore Jr., 23-year-old James J. Starks Jackson, uh, both charged now with first-degree attempt to commit an offense as well as second-degree felonious assault after allegedly shooting Kobe Jason Peterson in the stomach back on February the 9th, according to the uh, Bowling Green Sentinel Tribune. Uh, if convicted, the paper says, both individuals could face up to five years in prison. Yeah, just five years in prison for shooting somebody in the stomach. That doesn't seem like a lot of time. I mean, that seems like uh, attempted murder. Uh, but uh, that's what they're charged with. And, of course, if they take a plea bargain, they're going to do far less than five years behind bars. Uh, fascinatingly enough, 19-year-old Shante Moore Jr., he's actually a convicted felon. So he's facing charges of being a felon in possession of a firearm as well. Uh, and if the uh, U.S. attorney... Uh, there in Ohio were to take an interest in this case, decide that he wants to prosecute Shante Moore Jr. at the federal level for being a felon in possession of a firearm. The 19-year-old could actually face more time in federal prison for possessing a gun than he would face in an Ohio prison for actually shooting somebody with the gun. Maybe, just maybe, it might be time to, I don't know, increase the penalties for actually shooting some money, uh, by the anyway. Uh, according to the Fremont News Messenger, uh, Jackson uh, has a felony conviction for aggravated riot stemming from a June 2000 incident in Sandusky County. He was sentenced to time served, yeah, which amounted to about six months in the Sandusky County Jail, and then he was placed on one-year non-reporting probation. Uh, he had previously, uh, excuse me, James Starks Jackson Jr. had previously pleaded guilty to aggravated menacing, in 2017, he was sentenced to 180 days in jail with 90 days suspended. 
according to the Fremont Municipal Court records. So uh, that was a, a misdemeanor and uh, apparently not on probation for those crimes. Now, on to our armed citizen story of the day from KHOU in Houston, Texas, where a uh, home invasion in Katy, Texas, turned out poorly for the masked intruder who uh, tried to break in to that home. Uh, According to the Harris County Sheriff's Office, the uh, suspect ended up getting shot in the arm. Uh, He was wearing a mask when he broke in to the uh, home there on uh, Sandalford Road. Taken to a nearby hospital, he is expected to recover, according to uh, police, but he's also expected to be facing some charges once he's discharged from the hospital. The uh, homeowners there in Harris County, Texas, not expected to face any charges at all. And finally, our good deed of the day from South Carolina, Goose Creek, South Carolina, where a police officer in the right place at the right time, willing and able to uh, tie a tie for a uh, young man who unfortunately was uh, getting ready to attend a uh, a funeral there in the uh, South Carolina community. Goose Creek Police Department shared photos on uh, last Thursday morning. Uh, showing one of their officers helping a man tie his next tie. Uh, uh, Goose Creek PD said Officer Berg and another officer were uh, leaving the scene of a call when a man approached and asked if anybody knew how to tie a tie. Uh, he had a family funeral to attend. The uh, Goose Creek Police Department in a Facebook post said, without hesitation, Officer Bergen got back out of his car to assist. Uh, thank you, Officer Bergen, for your positive presence in our community. So there you go, in the right place at the right time, willing to uh, help out a stranger in a uh, time of need with just a a brief little favor that I'm sure meant an absolute lot. We uh, thank you, Officer Bergen, for your very, very good deed. And that is about all the time we've got for you on this edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. I want to thank you for being a part of the program. Don't forget, again, you can subscribe to Town Hall Media at YouTube, get access to all kinds of uh, information and interviews, not just from us here at Bearing Arms, but throughout the Town Hall Media family. Uh, you can also subscribe to Bearing Arms Cam and Company at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, townhall.com's podcast page. Probably left out a few as well. And you can become a VIP member of Bearing Arms at bearingarms.com. You get exclusive commentary, analysis, and more. And we certainly do thank you for helping to support the Second Amendment journalism that we do each and every day. Thanks for being a part of the program today. Have a great day. Tomorrow, you're going to hear from Jim Garrity, a Super Tuesday election special. And then we'll be back Wednesday with more of the latest Second Amendment news and information from all across the nation. We'll see you then here on Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. 